And welcome back to the after show. We're all still here. A um, couple of us are off playing games because that's what they do. Because we can't be after show. Yeah, pretty much. They haven't seen Childhood's End, so they just like, yep, distraction. I'm you can't be bothered. Bothered. Yeah. So, anyway, what do we think of Childhood's End? I'm actually going to bail at this point because I didn't watch it. <gasps> bad EJ, bad. Just for that, I'm going to throw you out the airlock. Woohoo! I can go another air ride. Seize. And he's gone. Oh. <laughs> did you cut him off? Did yeah, you... I cut him off. <laughs> <laughs> I threw him out the airlock. What do you expect? <laughs> at least it's not me getting tossed out this time. Normally <laughs> right, um, it's I me get... or Stuart, so. <laughs> it's yeah, like well, a change. well, Stuart's become one with the force, so I can't really throw him out. It won't work. He just becomes a sparkly ghost and just walks back in again. <laughs> or in the or in the case of Professor Proton on, on uh, Big Bang Theory, he pulls a lightsaber out, tries to stab himself, and it does nothing. <laughs> um. All right. So, uh, who who wants to go first, or should I? You go first. All right. I so basically, I decided to. I picked up the book and I started to read it because I wanted to read it before I actually watched the mini watched the miniseries you know, on Sci Fi because. You know, my my tendency is to read the book first. Um, yeah. But that involves reading, and reading is hard. Yeah, so I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I was not setting that up to be a joke, but it, yeah, just, yeah. it just worked. Oh, so, let me see. Hold on, I've got the book right here. Let me see what page I got to. Because I did read some of it. I got to page 19 out of, um, out of 212. <laughs> And then he woke um, up about an hour later. It was like, wait, what? What? What happened? No, Where am I? It, it's good. It's just I haven't. I just didn't get around to it. I got yeah. caught up in other stuff. Um, the book's good, and I plan on finishing it. However, from from what I read, the first nineteen pages of the you know two hundred and twelve um, didn't seem very much like the miniseries. And I have read some reviews that talked about how it was completely different than the book. Um, I I personally don't know yet because I haven't finished reading the book. But, um, but I did very much enjoy the miniseries. Um, the only thing is that if, like, I mean, I was surprised by the fact that they looked like demons, and I expected there to be, I expected kind of an explanation for why they looked like the de like the devil, but they never really did. Oh, they, they, never... they did. They, they went into, I think it was episode, uh... Episode three, they sort of highlighted how they'd come to Earth before, and did they really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, they'd come to Earth before, and that's where the sort of the idea and form of them was sort of came from, and they sort of set the they set the core humans on course to effectively ascend, which is what they did at the end of it. Spoilers. Uh, they didn't. The humans didn't really ascend. They... They, they became one with the universal consciousness, which is effectively ascending. Um, yes. So, the, well, like the children I, did, yes. Yeah, the children did. I, I was... I, I liked... I did like the miniseries. Um, yeah. I gotta say, my favorite part of that miniseries was probably the... Um, was probably the end scenes with... What's his name? The the kid that grows up and... Where yeah. He's with Corellin and... You know, he goes to their home world, and then they bring him back, and they and he offers. He says that he'll help Corellin, you know, as a scientist. You know, go down there and explain Watch. what's going on. Yes, and I thought yeah. that was quite a nice ending. Yeah. So yeah, it's it was it was a very interesting twist, and there was incredibly heavy religious tones through almost the entire thing. It was. But so I, I, I'm not sure if that was like that in the book or not. See, that's my thing. If if the book um, is as religious as that, then I'm fine with it. But if the book wasn't, then I've got a serious problem I'm turning it into that. Yeah. No, no, I'm pretty sure the book was. The, the, because What's-His-Face, the guy who wrote it was fairly religious, if I remember correctly. But um, there is a, like, there's an incredibly large amount of sort of parallels between biblical religion and specifically biblical-based religions. Uh -huh. And... And that movie, so that's serious. So, yeah, but I, I enjoyed it overall. Um, when it sort of revealed that Corellin looked like the devil, I was a little bit like, "Yeah, I see where this is going." <laughs> so, 
The question remains, if do you think that the human race would actually sort of roll over and take it? Or do you think that we would fight back if that happened? Well, again, they didn't they came in acting as if they were there. Oh, you mean at the end? No, no, at the at the beginning when they first rocked up, parked themselves over the cities and Corellin came over all of the different TV stations and stuff and made heaps of people hallucinate and effectively said, look, I'm here, you guys can't fight anymore, world peace, now. Well, you do know, I mean, you remember, they actually claimed that he... They disabled all their weapons. The, yeah, they, and they blocked out the sun when the one country did try to fight back. I mean, yeah. when, when they show that overwhelming power... You know, it kind of forces governments to back down, and, you know. Yeah, well, you, you, you've still got the whole, let's just keep crashing, let's crash satellites into their ships, just just because you can. Just be yeah. a bit pain. They would have stopped it. They wouldn't have let the satellites actually attack them. Yeah. You know, I don't know. I, I, I really don't know how it would happen. Like, I feel like there was... I like, it how, they, I like it how they landed the planes. Yes. Like, all the planes stopped and just casually... <laughs> lowered to the ground it's like um yep <laughs> but sorry sorry that you're attempting to fly around the world to go home and visit your family but you're landed now have fun oh, with I that for i forgot a piece of the news i just remembered a piece of news yes uh you want me to mention it well, sure why not it's the after show it's not like anyone listens spacex spacex <laughs> see it, it i i intentionally the goddamn rocket See, I knew you were going to mention it. I was just waiting for you to remember. Yes, I mean, that, I, I was like, so we went out, we were at the store getting, we switched over to a new service provider, a uh, cell phone provider, got new phones, and we were over there doing all that. And then we were like, okay, time to go. We wanted to pick up dinner. So I'm like, okay, we got to pick up dinner, and we're getting now like 20 minutes left until lunch. I'm just like, drive faster. <laughs> and I got the house ran over my laptop, opened it up, and turned it on with two minutes left before lunch. And I, I'm just glad I could watch that. You know, that yeah. was history in the making, and it's going to revolutionize spaceflight. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, anyway. Childhood 10 out of 10. I f we forgot to do the Star Wars out of 10, but we'll, whatever. Star Wars, nine, 8 out of 10 for me. Childhood's yeah. end, 7 out of 10. Yeah, I would... Originally, I gave Star Wars 8 out of 10, but I slipped down to 6. Um, I, I'm going to agree with Star Wars as a six because there's too many elements that I felt yeah. were direct copies, and too much of the story I thought was was predictable. I mean, yeah. if you couldn't see that Han was going to die, I when he did, uh, you were blind. Yeah. Yes, but I'm rating it an eight out of ten based on what the purpose of the movie was, which was not to create a new story, was to introduce the characters to a new generation. Yeah. Okay, anyway, so it's better to be sort of focusing on Childhood's End. Um, yeah, I know. Yeah. So, yeah. I said 7 out of 10 for Childhood's End. 7 out of 10 for Childhood's End, yeah. Sounds about right. Um, yeah. 7, yeah. For me, it loses points because of the religious undertones and then gains those points back later on when the, when the religious undertones actually make sense. Yeah. So, well, I mean, the thing is, I, I and I would have taken off points for the religious undertones, but I'm giving a benefit of the doubt in that the book was like that. And if the book was like that, then that's just the way the series is, and yeah. they're not going to change that. Oh, yeah, I, I agree 100%. And I, I, I understand sort of why it was set up that way. It's sort of a very interesting twist on the concept. So, yeah. Anyway. That's about 10 minutes. That's about all the after show normally is. So, you got anything else that you want to cover yes. in the after show yes very quickly um video games so uh, oh yeah video games just very quickly it's just one in particular that i've recently gotten back into and no it's not Kerbal, though i need to get back into that um sins of the solar empire i played the original one a few years ago but i haven't played it in a while and i recently got um you know on sale the uh, sins of the solar empire rebellion that game is one of the most fantastic RTS games ever. Oh yeah. It, the, the graphics are spectacular. The gameplay is spectacular. And even like I've never played anything higher than normal difficulty, and never with you know anything higher than like 20, uh, 20 uh, planets because that game takes so dang long. 
but it's so immense and it's spectacular and I love in the in Rebellion the Titans they're amazing oh yeah do you play that David? Uh, I used to play Sins I played I used to mod the crap out of it back in the day oh that's right you said that I need I need those mods David I need them <laughs> I don't think I've got them anymore. Can you, please, were, make, I, I, can you please make a sci-fi at war mod? <laughs> I suck ca catastrophically at modding since. Um, it's totally different to modding Empire at war. Uh. So, but yeah. Um, and the, very, my, the main reason the Stargate stuff won is because I didn't actually balance the mods against each other. I just left them at the default settings. <laughs> so, the Stargate stuff was just hilariously overpowered. Like, it would... F the Daedalus would rock up with Asgard... Sorry, they're not the Daedalus. The Excalibur, which is... Because like, they've got different classes of ships. All human-made. Would rock up and just... Asgard beam left, right, and center. And just wreck everything. It would fly into a solar system. Destroy everything in orbit. And it would fly out the other side in about a minute. <laughs> <laughs> and anything that attacked my base did stuff all damage. Sort of... Sort of I had enough time to bring the Excalibur back from wherever the hell it was all the way back to that system, save the day, and then fly back to where the hell it was. <laughs> so, yeah. It was say, hilariously I just, unbalanced. I just kept getting in this game that I just played of it. I just... This guy... This other... Uh, the other civilization or whatever I'm being now Civ. Uh, the other... The other... You know, the NPC just kept bombing me with those long-range guns. Like... Like, just kept disabling my frontline planets. And I just pissed me off so much. <laughs> like, this is basically what I did to... Oh, EJ's not on anymore. But it's basically what I did to EJ when we played StarCraft. I just nuked the hell out of his base. <laughs> 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 so, what you're saying is that effectively it's how I play Supreme Commander 2. Just build, so. a, build, build a wall of... T literal wall of anti-air and standard turrets across my front line. <laughs> and then directly behind that is a wall of shield generators, and directly behind that is just a wall of nuke silos. Yeah. yeah. And the other thing is that also the pilot world was right next to mine, and so they kept trying to yeah. like kept trying to decimate me and not the other guy. <laughs> yeah, that always sucks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I'll link I'll I'll link you to those mods um, okay, in a minute. Do. But my brother, my brother, let me just say this: my brother David, he just started a thousand world game. With six systems. Oh, God. I, I, I don't understand why he would do that. This is, this is his second time... This is his first time playing the game. It's just... But then... <laughs> I know! Wow. The He's, biggest the biggest game I played was five systems and I think it was about a hundred planets or something... And that was my sci-fi war one. Each planet, like each system, was a different series. Yeah, Star Wars was in one, Star Trek was in one, <laughs> Halo was in one, Battlestar was in one, and Stargate was in one. And I was Stargate. And the Stargate stuff was so hilariously overpowered. The um, the Halo stuff and the um, Star Trek, sorry, the Star Wars stuff both got annihilated. The Halo stuff by Battlestar and the Star Wars stuff by Star Trek. All while I was sort of fortifying my systems, um, so I took control of my entire my entire little sector was I took full control of it, and then blockaded each of the entry points from the other systems, <laughs> so I, I wouldn't have any unwanted surprises while I built up this like fortified and sort of super defended everything, let them deal with each other, oh, and then sort of move from into the next clump over, and then slowly but surely did the same thing there, and then to the next clump, to the next, to the next. So, How long did it take you? I can't remember. It was a while. <laughs> it was quite a while. I'm sure. So, the advantage <laughs> of being Stargate was it was hilariously OP, so I just sort of just rocked, just destroyed everything. <laughs> <laughs> so. Anyway, yes, I recommend Sins of the Solar Empire to anybody, uh, yes. anybody who likes RTS sci-fi games. Exactly. And if you're out there and you play Ark Survival Evolved, I am currently on the AU slash NZ True Blue Aussie server. Um, feel free to join us on there and look for Frodo. I'd be running around somewhere normally. <laughs> I need to get back into that game. Yeah, it's a good game. So Anyway, uh, we'll catch you guys later. That's the end of the after yeah. show. Uh, so, see you next time. Yep, bye. See ya. Bye. Bye. See ya.
<laughs> and the other voices reemerge. <laughs> well, I had nothing to add to it, so. Well, Amy, you <laughs> should play it, and then you'd have something to add to it. Oh, I got too much other stuff. I got Minecraft, Ark, Prisoner Architect. Oh. Well, drop Minecraft. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to get her to stop playing Minecraft. And I, I play a Transformers Angry Birds. <laughs> I, I okay. played that for a little while, Eugene. I'm yeah. thinking out an area, a 700 by 700 area, um, down to level 64, leveling out flat and turning into a castle. Yeah. 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 Just don't even ask. It's insane. <laughs> All right. Anyway, catch you guys later. Okay. All right. Bye. See you. Have a good one. See you next week. One, see you next week. One, see you next week.